Hi everyone, this is Lucas Chaffee with Kiko Chat. We're starting the recording January 14th. This is the 1 p.m. Eastern training session. We're on with a group of wonderful facilitators from across the world, and we have just finished an orientation to the different spaces on Kiko with the join video button, an image or logo. Here's the notes page, which you can replace with Google Docs, and we'll show how to do that in this training. And here are all the breakout rooms, which each one has the same tools. Okay, are there any questions before we show you an example of a, a great event that is inspiring? Okay. Please feel free to interrupt me at any time with any questions. So here's a fun event. Transforming Faces is a great organization that helps kids with the cuts in their lip, the cleft palate. And so these are surgeons from all over the world. We click map view and you can see that people are coming from all over. And if we go into the event, they've designed it well. Here's a logo on the left and it feels comfortable. On the right, they've got an image, but that could be a PDF. And there's other tools across the top. When you click on the button, it'll show something different here. So this looks like a web page. It's actually their web page embedded on the right hand side. There's no limit to the number of tools that you can embed here. All right, and if we go, so this is the welcome or help room. This technique is people can arrive here and then they're greeted and then they can go to the plenary room where all the discussions are happening. So here's another image to show you some information about the panelists, moderator. And so you can design this, create images, PDFs and embed them right here. Then maybe there's some discussion rooms happening here. When it's time to go to the breakout discussions, here's more information about when they're happening. And everything designed here was by the client. They have a graphic designer and they made it look exactly how they want it to look. Here's an example of a combination of a conference plus exhibitor booths. So this is a Oregon American Society of Landscape Architects. They put an image here. You see they change the colors a little bit, but not too much. It doesn't take long to do that. When you arrive, here's a PDF that shows their schedule of events. There's this welcome banner at the top in orange to keep people updated of what's happening now. Welcome, please join the main plenary those sorts of things, or the exhibit hall is open. You can put in a YouTube video. This is the video from day one. So after the Zoom fit recording is done, you can put that on YouTube and then embed it here. And we'll take a look at something they call the exhibitor passport. Here's all their exhibitors and each has a booth on the left. And I can quickly share my contact info by clicking this yellow button. And now they will have my contact info. Maybe I'm entering a raffle or trying to win a door prize or anything like that. Again, please feel free to interrupt me, even if I'm talking, because I won't be able to see everybody on video. Is there, is there a question? I'll go ahead and click ZGF Architects. So this is one of the sponsors. They have their own exhibitor booth. Here's their website. And they're putting some social media information in like Instagram or Facebook. And then you can join them on video by clicking the green button when it's when it's on. You can have everybody browsing the vendor booths ahead of time. And then during lunch hour, that's when all the vendors are present and speaking on video. So that's your, your choice or how you want to design this. Another thing that people do is poster sessions where everybody puts a different poster if they're gonna present in all the different rooms and people can go in and look at all the posters ahead of time and then they can ask questions on video 
when the time is right. So those are two examples and plenty more to show. Any questions before we start now to show you how to create your own event? We'll start here uh, with- Yeah, Lucas. Oh, yeah. Um, Please go ahead, Doug. Uh, so let's say on that last slide, you were at uh, you know one some architecture firm. There you go. And so you clicked on uh, ZGF Architects and it put you in that room, but but you couldn't speak in the way you were right there. Eh? It was you were just listening, right? I can speak. It'll be a full Zoom meeting that I can. I, I'm. It's like I'm walking into their virtual booth. When I click the video button here, which presently yeah. it's off. Um, if you want to see how to turn it on, if you're so no, no, that's okay. I, I get, but so the, when the video is off, um, I, yeah, no. Anyway, I was thinking, okay, the video would be off, and and you just be popping in to listen, okay. And then if you wanted to uh, click on a, a different one, like forms and surfaces or whatever that is, mm -hmm. would your face automatically move from ZGF Architects to forms and faces? Yes, it takes about five, 10 seconds. And then my profile icon shows up here. Right. And okay. there it is. And, and then if I wanted to, if I like what I see as I'm browsing their right. site, then yeah. I have a question for them. I can speak to them in their Zoom meeting that they're just right. they're talking to other people browsing through their booth in that Zoom meeting. Yeah, gotcha, thanks. Let's show an open space event. So this is open space is a method for those who are not familiar where the participants choose the topics on the day of the event. This is the Internet Identity Workshop. They hosted this in person for 15 years, every six months. So the, up to now number 30 and 31, they hosted the last two on Kiko and they've, have, they've come up with even new ideas as they keep innovating. It's great to watch. So about 400 people in this event, I'll click participate now. And we arrive in the opening circle. They chose not to have a lobby. This is probably more standard where you arrive right in the main room. And here's a banner for information. It says Internet Identity Workshop 31 has concluded and it gives you some instructions. Here's a PDF about the event. Here's the organizing team. And for folks that do open space, you may want to see the agenda. So the marketplace wall or whatever you'd like to call it, it's where all the topics are selected. So here we've got all the topics for 930 and here's all the topics for 11 o'clock. These topics are chosen by the participants. So all that you do as the organizer is you list out the breakout rooms and people fill in the topics. Each one of these breakout spaces has its own room over here. And if we go in and click in breakout space, let's find one that has, okay, breakout space A had something. So I'll click A. And this was a three day event. So I'm not sure which sessions were full or, or not, but go session 16A. So different Google Docs load here. Every different session has its own notes tool, its own Google Docs. And participants fill out the notes and they generate hundreds of pages of notes from this three day event. It's a community getting together and thinking together and documenting what they're learning from each other. The organizers just put a basic format and then the rest is filled in by participants. There's the format and then participants fill in the rest. And then it's combined into a book of proceedings at the end of the day. All right, other questions on what you've seen here? One more fun event. This one's more social. You can see the background color is changed, different logo. I'll teach you how to do that if you like. So here's a, just some instruction. This is a PDF that they've put in there. And then the agenda, if you scroll down, you see the whole agenda, the schedule. This was a large happy hour for about two hours. People arrive at the main room for a welcome. And then there's some activities in separate rooms, chat, trivia, games, all happening at the same time. And then the next round of events 
talk about wellness at work, live music, holiday cocktails. If we move down to see the music, it says live music, and we'll click into the room. And just a simple photo to give people an atmosphere of where the music is playing and then join video and you can hear the music, you hear the performance. And then if you wanna go somewhere else, you wanna go to trivia, you choose a different room and then you can join Zoom when you get there. All right, any questions on this? Mm. Mm. All right, let's try creating our own events. So we'll start here with this tutorial. Open up that Google doc. I'm gonna stop sharing my screen and now you get a chance. We're gonna patiently go through this tutorial so you could set up your own event. Step one is signing in, but you've already done that. Is there anybody that would like to share their screen? And so we'll keep pace with that person and we'll walk through with you as you go. Yeah, I can try. Super. Whenever... I'm not very good at it, so uh, you have to be very patient. This is fantastic. We certainly will be. This is a place to practice. And I, you're not alone. So you can keep your microphone on and we'll just talk and people can interrupt us with any questions. And when you're ready, if you want to share your screen, I'll make sure that you get all the right buttons clicked. Anybody that has any questions can feel free to type them into Zoom chat. Okay, am I pronouncing your name correctly when I say Lisa? Yeah, that's right, thank you. <laughs> Excellent. At the top right, there's a, a gray button with an X. If you click on that, that will close the chat window. It might be blocked a little bit by the, the faces on Zoom. It's over to the right a little bit more. Yeah. Yeah. That's it, please click that and that is gonna give us some more space. Mm, okay. All right, and now the first line where it says helpful links, it says we'll start with this tutorial. Please click on this tutorial. It's in the center of the screen, that's it. All right, this is the page that everyone's on. And if you like, you can skip ahead and you can explore it faster. There's some more links where you can learn more about Kiko and, and we'll catch up to you and save your questions and, and we'll get to them. Caroline, it says that you're not able to sign in. Uh, please do this, Caroline. You're already signed in yes. to Kiko chat somewhere because I think that when you click, I'm not sure. There is something strange. Maybe I'm not putting the right address. It's not mm -hmm. the first time it happens. So I don't know. I don't know how I'm excited, but it always says check my email when I'm in Kiko. There's a, there is something strong, uh, strange. That maybe is asking you to confirm your email. You won't mm -hmm. need to do that, but I'm going to give you, I'm going to put the link in Zoom chat here to create an event from your dashboard. That's another way to create an event. And you might wanna copy that link and bring it into the browser where you are already signed in. Sometimes when you click a link in Zoom, it's gonna take you to a different browser. Yeah. So do you see your name at the top right of the page now? Yes. Okay, so and, But I have this thing which is important. Click, uh, click to confirm your address. If you wanna oh. click that, then it's gonna send you an email and then you can confirm your email address that way, but it's oh, not Oh, there necessary. is a mistake. I think I've, I've entered the wrong email address. Oh, okay. Well, if that's the case, right now we can ignore it. But at the top okay. right, if you click your name and edit profile, you can change your email address. Oh, okay. But it's not it. necessary for what we're about to do. Okay. Okay, Lisa has, is looking at the tutorial and we're gonna to go to step two. It says there are three ways to create an event. We're gonna do the first one, which is a free event for testing purposes. Please click the link that says demo circle. 
Thank you. Again, people can ask us questions at any time. On Google Docs, when you click a link, it doesn't open it. it you have to then click one more time, and there you go. So here we have the demo circle. A circle is a collaboration space for a group of people. And anybody that wants to create an event on Kiko for testing purposes can do it in the demo circle. Circles have other tools like a weekly newsletter, a directory of members, a calendar of events. All of that is not immediately important to what we're talking about today. We're talking about how to make one great event. And that event doesn't have to be in a circle it's gonna be outside a circle. In this case, we're gonna put it in the demo circle and that's fine. Please click the green button, add an event. And then you can type in the title of your event. You can write your name and then say example or test or a conference or whatever you like. Putting your name is helpful because we're gonna be able to tell whose conference is whose. All of your conferences will show up in this list together. And if you scroll down a little bit more, there's, you can put a start date. We'll ignore that for now. And description, we'll ignore that. It has your time zone and that's good. We can scroll down a little bit more and we want a little bit more where it says uh, visible or hidden. There it is. Please change visible to hidden. So this way no one else will see your event. It's just for you. Uh -huh. We'll come back to all of these other options later. Please scroll down and click the green button and then your event is gonna get created. It'll take a moment. The green button that says schedule event, perfect. Is anybody having any difficulty at all? I wanna make sure you get to this point and then there'll be a lot of options that open up and you can explore in different directions. There's no such thing as a bad question at this point. Okay, Lisa, please click on your event. There's a few places, they all go to the same way. You can click the green button that says enter the event or you can click on the name of the event. We get people to the same spot. So by just creating an example, by typing in the title, your event is created. It only took a moment. Mm -hmm. On the left-hand side, you can see the time zone. And then on the right-hand side, you can see who is registered. It says one RSVP. In American English, that stands for the people who are going to attend. But you could change that inside your event if that doesn't translate well into the language that your participants are speaking. Uh -huh. Please click the green button for participate now. So you've got this link to the event and you could just easily share it to your Facebook group, you can share it in email, and then people can come in and create a guest account, or they can sign in and create an account with an email address. Right now, we have not locked this event down. It's open for anyone to join as long as they have the link. People will not find it on Kiko Chat. We don't want people finding each other's events. We only want the organizer to share the link with the participants, and that's how people get in. But if people have the link, then they'll be able to get here. Unless you lock it down and say only people with these email addresses are allowed. Now you have all the basics. You have a main room and 10 breakout rooms. Each of them is already connected to a Zoom meeting. And each of them is already connected to a notes document on the right. So you could host a simple open space with just what's provided here after typing in just the start date, and the title. We're gonna go ahead and customize this more, but before we go any further, are there any questions? Please click the edit button, which is near the top left of the page. It's right next to the name where it says your name and the word example. Great. You're the event administrator, so you can edit this event. And you can also give that capability to other people if you have a team working on the event. You can write in a description if you like, and we'll skip that for now. Let's scroll down to the orange section. 
Oh, and while we're looking at it, it says important in red. This is the number of participants. If you have a large event, please do put the number of participants in there. It lets us know to make sure that we're gonna have enough servers running and that everything is prepared for you. So you can just put in 58 people. It has no effect on the billing. You get billed by the amount that people actually use. If people are in for an hour, then Zoom is gonna track that they were there for an hour and then they're gonna bill us and we will bill you. You don't need a Zoom account. You don't need your participants to have a Zoom account, but they do need to download Zoom. Zoom charges us half a cent per minute per person. That's 30 cents per hour per person. We charge you one cent per minute per person or 60 cents per hour per person. And we charge $1 per day. That's only when you're on Zoom. So what does that mean? If you have an event that is a workshop and lasts four hours, then the cost for each participant is just $3.40. So it's less than the cost of parking. I didn't quite get that. Uh, could you make the calculation once again? Yes. The four hour workshop. I'll put it into the Zoom chat also. For a four hour workshop, the cost is $3.40. There's a pricing calculator on our homepage and I shared the link in Zoom chat and it's also in the notes for this free training, all those notes that were yellow when you arrived. Mm. Housing California asks, what happens if you have your own paid Zoom account? You can save a little bit, but, and we welcome you to do that. It's gonna require a little bit more work on your part and the cost will go from one cent per minute per person to half a cent per minute per person. So you still pay the dollar per day. And that will only apply to the room where you're using your own Zoom account. If you're using our Zoom accounts in all the other rooms, then one cent per minute per person will apply. So you can save 30 cents per hour per person. If it's a hundred people, you could save $30 an hour. It's not a huge cost, but it, depending on the budget for your organization, that might be important. We don't let costs get in the way of people using Kiko Chat. We find our costs are very competitive and often far less expensive than other conferencing tools, but it is more expensive than using just Zoom on your own. If your organization doesn't have the budget to use Kiko, then let us know and we'll see what we could do about reducing the price. But the, there's some nonprofits that need that and we're happy to help. I'm sorry, I'm, I'm quite slow. How do you edit? So I clicked on participate. Great. On my own event. And then? At the very top, you see the name of your event in black and white. And mm -hmm. then next to that, ah, you see edit, edit button. Great, and that is where we are right now. We haven't done anything yet. We're gonna start, let's see, any other questions before we start editing the event? Thank you for that question. Please click the orange section that says customize your main space and breakouts. Here, you can change the number of breakouts. You could say 30, you could say five. That's the first number when you change it from 10. All right, and the next thing, maybe you wanna name each of the breakout spaces something different. In the next area, that big white box, put some words. So you could say main room can be the first. That's it right there. Up one more, there it is, main room. And then on the next line, so hit enter, and then you can call this one orange room, the next room, yellow room, green room, whatever you'd like to call it. That's gonna be the name on the button when someone clicks to join. Okay, very good. And the next one, we'll go down to the next area. It says add a discussion topic for the main space. A discussion topic for the main space will say, the, the plenary will start here. 
or welcome or anything you like like that. You can say welcome exclamation point. That's helpful. And we'll see where that shows up once we click save. Thank you, Lisa. We'll scroll down and we'll take a look at the next area. All right. Online tools. We'll skip the discussion topic. Let's go to online tools there and we'll paste in a Google Doc. You have a Google Doc in your browser, Lise. That's tab two. I could see the blue icon at the very top of your screen. It says Quick Start. If you can copy the link over there, you can paste it. Tab two is at the very top, even above the address bar. It's possible that Zoom is blocking it right now with our faces. That's it. Click on that right where you are with your mouse there. Just quick start. Yes, please. And then yeah. we want to copy that link. So click on it and click on the address bar where it says docs.google.com. Docs the whole long address in the address bar, the whole oh, yeah. link. Yeah. You, you can just click on it one time. Okay, you got it. Uh, you can also just click and it will select the whole thing. But perfect, okay. you've got it now. Please go back to where we're editing the event. That's tab number four in your browser. Yeah. Please paste in the link that you've just copied. Very good. Let's scroll all the way down and click the green button to update your event. All right, now we can start to see some of our changes. It says main room at the top left. You can see on the bottom left, there's orange room, yellow room. And on the right hand side, you're able to see the Google Doc has replaced the notes that are there by default. So now everybody can see the Google Doc that is created. Are there any questions about what we've done so far? The next thing we'll put in are some Google drawings. So this is a way for people to use post-its and move them around. I'm going to put this into the Zoom chat. It's called post-its. Please copy that link. And then we're going to go back to the edit event page. Oh, yeah. All right, Lise, do you have it copied now? No. Uh, now I have, uh, I, I couldn't find the chat because it was, yeah, now I have it. I have it copied, yes. Great. Yes, it, for others who are not familiar, when you're screen sharing, Zoom hides the chat. So you have to go to more and then find the chat. Okay, great. You've got it copied. Please yeah. click the edit button that is at the top left of the screen. And scroll down to the orange section, which says customize your main space and breakouts. Mm -hmm. Yes. We're gonna go down below to where it says online tools. It's the place where you pasted in that Google doc before. Please yeah. put this drawing online too. Great. Let's click the green button and then that will update the event and we can go see what this looks like. So in the main room, we still have the Google Doc. And if you go to the orange room, in her case, which is the second room, then we'll see the Google drawing so people can be moving post-its around here. Ah, yeah, that's right. Now, maybe you want to put the Google Docs and the Post-it together in the same room. Please click Edit at the top of the page, and we're going to go right back to where we pasted in those Google Docs and the Google Drawings. It's in the orange section, if you scroll down, where it says Customize your main space and breakouts. Please scroll down again to where it says Online Tools. 
at the end of the Google Doc link, if you can go all the way to the end, Lise, on the right side of that, I want to point out that it says slash preview. Normally, a Google Doc link says slash edit. And that is an editable document, as long as you've given people the permission to edit it. That's, so it's important when you're on Google Docs, on the Google Docs site, you share it with anyone who has the link. There's a big blue button that says share on that Google Doc. And then when you copy the link, it says slash edit. If you change slash edit to slash preview, it makes it cleaner, but it, it takes off all the buttons across the top for editing and people can't edit it on that page. So we often do that when you don't need people to edit it. It just looks cleaner and they're not confused by all the editing buttons at the top. So that's what the preview does. Can you repeat that once more, please? Absolutely, Sebastian. Let's, let's do this. Please triple click on the first line, Lise. Anywhere there, click triple click. There you go. Triple click is going to grab the whole line, copy it, and then put it down on the second line. So we're going to have the same line repeated. All right. Now change preview to edit. Yeah. If you double click on preview, I think that'll be an easy way to grab it. <clears throat> Let's go take a look at the difference between these. Please scroll all the way to the bottom, the green button, and click update. In the main room, it said slash preview. When the page loads, you won't see any buttons at the top. It's very clean. When we go to the orange room, we'll see all those buttons at the top. Mm, got it. It also has that agenda on the left-hand side which is a little bit painful. There's no way to get rid of that agenda that shows there in gray and black. If you click the arrow above the agenda, it will hide it, but only for you. So all the participants would need to do that. That's a little bit painful, but for now, that's the way Google Docs works. It's always changing. Let's put the Google drawing inside room one so we'll have two documents in room one, the notes or this Google Doc and the Google Drawing with the post-its. Please click edit at the top left of the page. Scroll down to the orange section where it says customize your main space and breakouts. And then scroll down again to where it says online tools. You could triple click on row two and then delete it. We don't need row two anymore. And now at the very beginning of this, in front of HTTPS on the first line, please put the word, say, agenda, capital A, G, E, N, D, A, and then the two dots. That's a colon in English, two dots. Perfect. And then let's go down to line three and let's say draw colon. What we're doing right now is putting on a name for a button. So if you go down to the third row where it says HTTPS, yeah. please put draw, D-R-A-W colon. So we're gonna have one button that says draw and one button that says agenda. And when you click on the button, it's gonna show that link. But right now these links are in different rooms. What we have to do is move draw up. So please put draw with a, a delete or a backspace, put it up on the first row. One more. And now put a space in there, press space bar. Mm, yeah. Okay, and it's hard to see in there, but your agenda is on the left, draw is on the right. Let's move all the way to the right just to see it. This is the hard way that I'm showing you how to do it. Okay, we need a space between in front of draw. This way we'll know that it's two separate things. There's an easier way to do this and I'll show it to you, but this is the quick way. Please go all the way down to the green button at the bottom. 
an update. Perfect. Now we have two tabs on the top. And if you click on agenda and draw, you will see the change. There's agenda and then there's draw. Yeah. So you could put in many different, we recommend Google drawings for post-its because people don't need to sign in and it's pretty simple, but it's not as powerful as Miro. Miro is embeddable in an interactive way, but I believe people have to sign into Miro to use it. And then Mural, which is another post-it board and very powerful, that one's not yet embeddable to the best of my knowledge. We'll pause here for any questions about what you've seen. That's amazing so far, Lucas. Thanks, Sebastian. Yeah, it's really no limit. You just think of what you want to do, how many spaces you want, and what you want in all those spaces. I have already forgot where, where I found this, um, uh, this Google uh, Draw, for instance. Was it in Quick Start? This Google drawing I gave to you in Zoom chat. Ah, yeah, that's right. That was, yeah. And other people have the same one. So you'll want to make a copy of it to use in your event. Because this one that I gave you, this specific link, many people are editing all the time. And so under there's a red button in the center of the screen. It, it's a Google picture. Next to that, it says File. If you click File, then you can make a copy and then you'll have your own. So I should actually do that. Yes. Make a copy. Yeah. I think you should do it. You could do it later for now. I think okay. it's it's good for now. The next yeah. the next thing we might want to do is to upload a PDF or an image. Do you have something on your computer that you'd like to upload? Yeah. Okay. So what you upload is not, it's not easy for people to find because we don't want people looking at each other's documents, but it's also not locked down. Anybody who has the link is gonna be able to see this picture, but they're not gonna be able to search and find it. It just makes it easy to embed into, into the event. I'm gonna put in our Zoom chat, the link you would click to upload a file. All right, there it is. You can click on that and that will open up a new page on Kiko Chat where you can upload a PDF or an image or even make a blog post. You can do many things with this page, but the normal thing that people do is upload documents. So please put for the title, you can say main room image or PDF for the main room, whatever you would like to put in here. Lucas, wh how, where to click to get there? In Zoom chat, I've mm -hmm. shared a link. Ah, yeah. It says yeah. upload a file. Yeah. Perfect. Mm -hmm. The only thing you, you need to do on this page, aside from put a title, and the title is just for you, so you know which one this is, please scroll down and click upload a file at the bottom left. And option one is upload a file from your computer. You, if it, we're gonna see all the files on your computer, so you may wanna pause screen sharing at this point. Would you like to do that? If, no, I don't think it's necessary. I think it's... Okay, great. So if you wanna find an image or a PDF, whatever you like, they'll pretty much work the same. Sheila, I see your message. Thanks for that, those kind words. My email is lucasakikochat.com if you have any questions. And we also have open office hours. So I'm putting the link to open office hours in Zoom chat and my email address. Also on WhatsApp, or if you're in the United States, you can just dial directly. I hope to see you in future events online. Feel, don't, feel, don't hesitate to reach out. Thank you. Okay, Lise has selected a file 
and just click the green button at the bottom and it will upload the file to KikoChat. The file doesn't have to be uploaded to KikoChat. It just has to be uploaded somewhere online. So you can upload it on your blog. You can upload it to other websites. Please click the green button and then I'll show you how to get the link. It looks like it's uploading. Lisa, can you hear me? All right, I think hopefully it'll, we'll see how, if it finishes or if it times out. Oh, there I think go. it's there, yeah. Perfect. So the blue button, you can either right click and copy the link or you can click on it and it's gonna open up this document and then you can get the link that way. So whichever you like, you can grab, okay, I guess it's a big file. So copy the link from the address bar, but it's beautiful. The address bar where it says HTTPS. Great, yeah. please, please copy that. Very yes. good. Yes. Okay, so once you've copied it, we're gonna go back to where you edit your event. Mm, yeah, that's. I, I'm guessing it's tab number four on your browser. Ah, yeah, you are right. Please click edit at the top left. Yeah. Yeah, okay, here, yes. Good. Super. Now let's put this image into one of your rooms. Please scroll down to the orange area and then scroll down again for online tools, right where we put the agenda and Google Docs. Very good. Let's go for a new blank line and paste in the link. And scroll all the way down and click the green button The agenda and drawing have not changed. We put this new image into the orange room or the second room. Please click orange room. Yeah, wow. So it's a little bit separate and we're working on making it tighter so you don't have to go all the way over there to do it. But this is how you do it. You just upload the things you need and you put them into the correct room. Yeah. That's good. I will show, I'll share with my screen now. Here's our free training. And I'm gonna get a panoramic view. I uploaded this image, I'm gonna copy it. And so Lisa, you put the image here. It took up the whole thing on the right. And so the notes are gone. Mm. Are, you can always get them back. Maybe you wanna do that, or maybe you just wanna put an image on the top and you wanna keep the notes or you wanna keep the Google doc. This is what you do. You click edit and then scroll down, orange section for customize your main space and breakouts. This is where we were putting the Google Docs. Yeah. And I'm going to put it here. Ah, oh, banner image. Exactly. If I wanted yeah. to put this banner image in multiple rooms, paste, 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 put it in all the rooms like that. And I will also give this banner image to you in Zoom chat right now. When I click save or update at the bottom, We'll go back into the event and you can see the banner image on the top. Mm. 
So you have image on the left, image on the top, or the image in the last case that you did, it can go right here instead of a PDF. All right. Fantastic. <laughs> yeah, it's fun. And you can change the colors. Um, let me, let's say we want to change all the colors in the background. I'm going to go to a previous event. Now this is a little bit harder and it takes some patience. If you want to change the colors, here's a custom style tutorial. And I'm going to make that link. I'm going to update that link here. Okay. So if I want to change the colors to be like this event here. I copy this whole thing in gray, all of this. I know that it's a little bit intimidating or scary looking, but copy all of that and it's going to make your event look like this. And then you can change the colors later. So I go back to our event, I click edit, and then custom styles is over here under custom formatting. It's at the very bottom of the screen section. And I'll paste it in. And I go down to the green button at the bottom. If you look closely, it's saying, find this button for changing breakouts and make the background one color and make the words black. I can teach you how to do that, but, but there. So it, now it looks even better with a bright color and instead of white in the background. So it makes it fun. You can bring the, the colors of your organization into the event. If you'd like to give that a shot, I'm just gonna go down here and make it easier. Custom. CSS. CSS is the code for custom uh, cascading style sheets. So you would paste in everything below the dotted line. You put that in the green area where it says custom formatting. One, another fun one will be spatial chat. I'm gonna share this link with you into Zoom chat. Please copy that link, Lise, and I'll show you how to put it into your event. This is a good tool for networking. Yeah, it's copied. Please share your screen. Yeah. Output just yeah share and edit exactly and then we go down to some custom text and formatting here let's go to the orange section okay yeah all right and let's change orange room instead let's put something between main room and orange room put the word networking. Good. And please scroll down and let's find 
online tools. All right, put this in line two, right under agenda. Oh, I made it. Yeah. Perfect. Okay, so we pasted spatial chat in. And one more thing while we're here. Yeah. In the blue area at the bottom of the screen, it says show hide. Yeah. Yes. And we're going to hide the video in room one, in your case. Please scroll down a little bit more. And it says hide join video button in these rooms. Just put the number one. If you wanted to hide video in multiple rooms, you'd one comma two comma three, but we just need the, the number one. We're gonna hide video in room one. Room zero is the main room and breakout. Room zero is the, is the first. And then the first breakout is number one. The second breakout is number two. Third breakout is number three. That's why we line them up like that. Start and then scroll down and click the green button, please. All right, now let's go to the networking room on the left. Yeah. Yes, you'll see that the join video button is not there anymore. And instead we have this tool called spatial chat. So you put in your name, that's already done. And if you scroll down a little bit, you'll see a way to click in. Underneath your name, there'll be a button. Lisa, if you scroll down, I don't know if my internet is slow or not. Yeah, something happened. Sorry I scroll down, yeah. Scroll down and then click the button that says continue. Yeah. And they're not gonna be able to get, you're in Zoom right now, so it's not gonna be able to access your microphone, but normally you wouldn't be in Zoom and spatial chat at the same time. So that's okay, please click close. Yeah. And then join space. We'll click that orange button. Mm. And so there's a neat thing. Other, mem other people who are in here can move close to you. <laughs> yeah. And you can see them. And when you're close to each other, you can hear each other. And I'll, I'll jump in there too. Right now we're on Zoom together. So there could be an echo going back and forth. So normally we would close Zoom and just be in spatial chat. And when you're nearby, Sebastian, as he moves away, my voice gets quieter for him. So that's a fun tool for networking called spatial chat. We yeah. pay fifty dollars a month to have this tool, and you can borrow it from us for twenty-five dollars for your event. So it's half price. What is the name of this? Spatial chat. If you look at the very bottom of that spatial chat page, then you will be able to see it. If you scroll down, Lisa, a little bit more. Okay, I guess it's not visible here. Spatial chats. It's it's in the link. I will put it in there. Here we go. I put the spatial chat homepage into the Zoom chat. And to leave spatial chat, you would go to another room or refresh the page and that will get you out of it. Excellent. Let's see what other questions people have and things that they, they want to happen. We can embed a YouTube video. I will share my screen and YouTube. We'll find opera singer Pavarotti. And we'll go to share. 
it's important that you grab the embed link. You cannot grab this link. That will not work. You have to go embed. and select it. This is the whole embed code. You don't need the embed code. You just need the link. So just take just the part you need, OK? You can go in a Microsoft Word or any other tool you want. And I just put it up there so I can, I can take just that link out. Here is our event, and I'll click Edit. I'll also put it in the Zoom chat, example YouTube video. Now, I can go down to Customize Your Main Space and Breakouts, and I'll just paste in the YouTube embed link. While I'm over here, I will also grab the whole embed code, copy it, and I can put the whole thing in the description. Description for the event. All right, so just the embed link was down below, and then the whole thing goes in the description. I'll click Update. And for me, I go to the in room one, and there is the embedded video. And the description shows over here, event RSVP page. This is the page people land on. So you'll see your video here. Good. Yeah. If I want to stretch this to be 100% width, you're going to learn a little bit of HTML now. Click Edit. And there's the width. You see it says width. Don't be afraid. Just give it a shot. Say 100%. So instead of always being 400 pixels wide, now it's 100%, and it will change. If you want, you can even increase the height. I like to do that. And that's all. Change the width from whatever it was to 400 to 100%. Go back to the event RSVP page. And now it's full width, and it will change based on the size of your page. What other things would you like to do today? You're welcome to leave at any time. We will post the recording right here on the free training. I'm here for another 40 minutes and I'm just gonna keep showing more and more things. It's late in the day for some folks, so I understand if it's exhausting and I'm here to help. We can talk about inviting people to an event. If I take the link to the event and I go in a new browser, I'm going to be redirected to the sign in page and I'm prompted to sign in. You can change the sign in link. I'll teach you how to do that, but it's a different look. So this is if you don't want someone to create a full account, you just want them to enter a username and email address. This is helpful if you've got a list of email addresses for people that can enter the event and, and you don't want anybody else to come in. You have to have an email address that's on the list. What I did is you change the normal link with it says slash E you change it to PWD and you put slash guest at the end. 
you don't have to memorize this. It's over here in, on this document for all the different options. Oh, let's see. I'm gonna have to go to the guide to get the right link. Geekochat.com slash guide. That guide link is over here. And I'm looking for options for inviting people. Securing your events, that's it. That's not it. All right, I'm gonna put it in the guide. Options for how to invite participants to events. That was too hard to find. I'll put it in our notes here. website is this here, this WordPress page? This WordPress page is where I edit. There we go. I said the, the, the guide. Is, is that guide also in the, uh, in the pad in your free training room? Yes. Over here, this one. Ah, Kiko user guide. Yeah, got it. Thanks. You're welcome. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's a lot there, uh, but you don't have. It's it could be overwhelming to try to make the most advanced event possible. <laughs> it's very good to start with. Just try one and then you're gonna need something and you come to the open office hours and you get your questions answered and we're there six times a week. Uh, you can just pop in, ask any question and those open office hours, let's see if we have it listed here. I'll put it there, open office hours. Mm -hmm. It's good to know. And if we have a, like, if we, if we are in the process of creating an event and we have like problems or a question, we can just join these open, open, open office hours. Absolutely. Oh. If you want, you can also bring us in and we can, uh, let's say you have a client with a good budget mm -hmm. and you don't want to have to figure out everything. You can have mm -hmm. us come in and either train you or mm -hmm. we can work with you for your first event to help you configure it all. Because you see, there's too much to remember the first yes. time you see it. Yeah. So we find that we might help a facilitator for a few hours on their first client. And then the second time, all they need is the free hour of support that we give to everybody for, their, for every event. So yeah. for every event you have one free hour of support. And, and in addition, unlimited for the office hours, just come in as much as you like. Offer email support, but we, we love working with facilitators. That's how the platform gets better too. When we mm -hmm. work as part of your team to help you deliver services for the client, especially on your first one. 
but, but you don't need us uh, to do it. You can yeah. create the events all on your own, but we, we love joining you for a project and we learn from you. You know, you've got deeper facilitation skills than we have. And, and the platform gets better as we get in depth and learn how to make it better. This is really great support, Lucas. Thank you. Mm -hmm. You're very welcome. Very great, yeah. Well, you have the contact information and we'll post the recording for this event right on the, where the Pavarotti video is right now on the landing page for this event. Pavarotti video. <laughs> <laughs> My parents put me on a horse. He was holding, he was riding a horse, Pavarotti, in a parade in New York City. They were so excited that Pavarotti was holding me that they walked away and they forgot me. And then he says, hey, the baby. So oh, I really? almost, yeah, that really happened. So Pavarotti was holding you? Yeah, in the, it was before the parade. He was, it, it, they wanted to just take a photo with me and Pavarotti and they took the photo and they walked away. So uh, <laughs> it's fun. Uh, okay. Well, Good story. <laughs> I'll stay here for any additional questions. I'll stop the recording now. For anyone that's at home watching this, you can reach us at lucas at kikochat.com. And 